That means I keep my eyes on him. I'm paying attention to what he has to say. I'm submitted to, unto him and the things that he would speak to me. And so the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Okay. And so don't forget now that that this has a, a the, the, the scripture always has a, a double fold, so to speak, to them. Like how in um, Hebrews, when it says there is a two-edged sword sword. And so always remember, it says the Lord is my shepherd. So the Lord may be a shepherd through someone. That means that the Lord has put someone in your life for you to be submitted through to as he lives through them and he teaches or instructs you through them. And so David is saying, the Lord is my shepherd. So he's acknowledging the fact that I'm sheep. I'm sheep. I'm sheep. Even though I was raised a shepherd boy, I'm sheep. Oh, Lord. Did y'all hear that? Even though he was raised a shepherd boy, he still realized the fact that he was sheep. I'm sheep. I'm sheep. Why? Because there is always an authority. There's always an authority to me. So he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I'm sheep. I'm sheep. Okay, so now let me further explain. I'm shepherd to the house of Trim, but I'm sheep to Apostle Paulette Brooch. Catch what I just said. I'm shepherd to the house of Trim. I'm the pastor, but I am sheep to Apostle Paulette Brooch. So you can't miss the structure of how things needs to be. A lot of times we get out, get things out of context and we can literally think that because we're in a leadership position that that means that we don't have to be subject anymore. That's not true. I am subject. I'm very, I'm, I'm subject. I'm subject. The Lord is my shepherd, he says. Next part, this is the phase I need to get us to. I shall not want. I need to help y'all with the I shall not want part. The Lord allowed me or instructed me this morning to go to the, um, look up the word want in the Hebrew. The, it says, I shall not want. Now, that want in context in the mindset would literally be if uh, until the Lord brings us to a position of knowing the truth about it, we literally would think that it is, I, I you know, I shall not want a car. I shall not want a, uh, I shall not want a, a house. Uh, you know, the, the, we, we put it in the context of heaping of things. Heaping of things. Well, that's not what it is. Uh, the Hebrew translations for that is is the the Hebrew word for the want is is lack. I shall not lack. Shortage is another one. When I looked it up, you can you can Google it. Just Google Hebrew word for want, and you'll catch you'll see this. It says lack, shortage, deficiency. Deprived, lack, shortage, deficiency, deprived. So it says, the Lord is my shepherd. Now catch it from the right mentality now. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in lack. I shall not be in shortage. I shall not be in deficiency. And I shall not be deprived. The Lord is my shepherd, he says. My shepherd. Because sheep literally are dumb. And so this sheep has enough sense. And that's one thing that I love is when you can be a sheep but have enough sense to know who your shepherd is. When you can be, when you, 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 when that's one thing that I do love about sheep. No matter how dumb they are, they know who their shepherd is. And they know for a fact to stay close to their shepherd. They don't allow anything to keep them separated from their shepherd. Why? Because their shepherd has the things that they need to guide them as to where they need to be. I'm not finished with the text yet. The shepherd has the guidance that is needed for their life. 
life. It says, the, the Lord is my shepherd. That's the number one thing. As sheep, you have to realize, one, I'm dumb. You're not as smart as what you think you are. You're not smarter than a fifth grader. Hmm? You know what I'm saying? You're not as smart as what you would think you are. The Lord is my shepherd. Acknowledgement first from a dumb sheep. The Lord is my shepherd. Then goes in to say, because he is my shepherd, that I shall not want. I shall not be in a place of lack. I shall not be deprived. I shall not be in deficiency. I shall not be in shortage because the Lord is my shepherd. Why? Because my shepherd has everything that I need. It is very important that you make sure that you are connected where you need to be connected and how you need to be connected. It is very important because that shepherd houses the things that will keep you from being in deficiency. That sh- oh God, that shepherd houses the things that will cause stuff to happen. Why? Because this is what the shepherd is going to do. Verse two, the shepherd makes me lie down in green pastures. Being in the right place, in the right position, make me lie down in green pastures. So that means the shepherd is always going to keep me at a place of plenty. God, the shepherd is always going to keep me at a place of plenty. Anytime there is a deficiency somewhere in my life and financially or however, the first thing I do is I call apostle. And I say, hey, look, this is what's happening right here. We need, can, can you please agree with me? Can you please agree with me concerning this right here? Because, you know, and, and she'll say, what is the amount, you know, or what have you? One of the first things, why? It's because he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. See, I need y'all to understand. Let me show you what the Lord showed me in this. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Why? Because I'm a sheep. I'm dumb. So I got to trust my shepherd enough to lie down and know that my shepherd is going to cause me to lie down in green pastures. See, I'm in green pastures. Notice I'm there, but I don't recognize the fact that I'm there. Why? Because I'm still standing in the mentality of the fact of being a sheep that's dumb. I literally got to submerge or emerge. I've got to submerge, which means take myself under. And I've got to emerge, which means to become one with that shepherd so that I am in a position of not wanting. And then I can be made to lie down, lie down there, Fiend. It's okay. It's many a time she's had to say to me, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay, Lee. Don't worry about that. It's all right. It's all right. Make it me to lie down in green pastures. Then goes to say, leadeth me. Look at that. Leadeth me beside the still waters. Listen here. Leadeth me beside the still waters. Okay. So you're going to literally cause what is usually moving to stand still so that I'm able to apprehend it. That's right. That is a very special place to be in. That is a very special place. But what gets you to that place? When you realize one, who the shepherd is, when you submerge and you emerge, that's what gets you to that place. Have I changed the text anywhere? Tell me. I'm going to pause for a minute. Did I change the text anywhere? Somebody come at me. I'll take it. Let's go. Did I change the text anywhere? Well, you got a little people for what it, what it is. Say that again. Y'all talk to me this morning. Where you at? Did I change the text anywhere? Psalms 23. Psalms 23. Psalms 23 right now. That is. And see, so let me tell y'all. The Lord showed me this. He says, the Lord is my shepherd one. You got to understand when he said the Lord is my shepherd, he was literally acknowledging and submitting himself as a sheep. As a sheep. 
So listen, I need to say this right here for those of you that don't want to submit to nobody. That's why you always have problems. And that's why you surely go, you, you surely will have problems with me. Because I ain't with it. He, the Lord is my shepherd. I'm a sheep. He's the shepherd. He's in charge. But benefits came from knowing how to respect the shepherd. Since first benefit was, I shall not want. I shall not be in lack. I shall not be deprived. I shall not be in deficiency. I shall not be in shortage. That is enough right there, y'all, to give God glory. Hey, wait a minute. Life literally always tries to bring about a lack somewhere. But look at it and say, I know. Uh uh. Not here. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. He's my shepherd. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Why? Because when you come to Christ, you literally still come standing in you. You still come standing in you. Let's talk about it this morning. You still come standing in you. I came standing still in me. Why? Because everything that had been instilled in me, it was still a part of me. So I literally thought that I could still do it the way that I had been doing it, the way the family had been doing it, the way society had been doing it. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. The thing of it is, is I'm in green pastures and didn't even recognize it. How many of you are in green pastures and don't even recognize it? Why? Because you're still trying to stand up in you. You're still trying to do things your own way. You still trying to handle things from your own recognizance. Still trying to protect yourself. Haven't submerged or in and emerged because you've got to submerge and emerge. You've got to submerge, which means to go under, which means I bring myself under subjection. I'm subject to it. And then I emerge, which means I becomes I become one with it. So literally, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. It is amazing how much stuff can be ours and how many promises have been made to us and we haven't gotten them. Why? Because we haven't lied down in green pastures. Why haven't we lied down in green pastures? Because I'm still standing. Because I'm still doing me. I'm still handling things the way I want to handle things. So that's why I haven't lied down in green pastures. And then it says another benefit is, is he leadeth me beside the still waters. When have you known waters to be still? The Lord told me, he said, I need you to let them know that that is symbolic of the fact that nothing will get away from you. God help me. Lord help me this morning. He says, nothing will get away from you. Listen, it's got to stop just for you to be able to get it. It ain't going to get away from you. Uh, it's not going to get away from you. Make it plain, Pastor, I will. Uh, Jeremiah, <laughs> Jeremiah 29 and 11 says he knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you, right? Uh, there are thoughts of good and, and, and there are thoughts of peace and not evil to bring you to an expected end. And, and so that means he set the ending from the beginning. So he's going to make sure that nothing gets away from me. Everything that he's orchestrated for my life, I'm going to be able to have. I'm going to be able to do everything. Why? Because he's going to stop it. Don't you go nowhere to their finger you here. Stay right there. She's on route. She's en route to you right now to get you. She's about to pick you up. Mm -hmm. Million dollars. Stay right there. She en route to you. She about to pick you up. Mm -hmm. Oh God, y'all didn't even yeah. y'all didn't even catch that, did you? Oh my Lord. Somebody did. I felt it when it pushed, like it pulled out of my gut when I said that. Somebody got it. Somebody got it. Somebody. I don't know which one of y'all it was, but somebody got that. He said, still waters, million dollars. Sit still right here. She coming. Sit still. She's coming. She's coming. She's coming. Verse 3 says, he restored my soul. Yeah. He restored my soul. Why? Because before I met him, 
And before I allowed him to become my shepherd, my soul was in torment. My soul, which is my mind, will, and emotions, were in complete torment before I met him. So he had to restore, restore it. There's an ETH at the end of the word, restore. That ETH at the end of the word in the Bible means...